the goods and services tax sure. or, or GST, now 7%, but uh, to go up uh, by a percentage point to 8 next year and then another percentage point to 9 the year after, uh, 2024. Uh, some people might say, why not delay it further? Could it not be done? Well, we do look at the options very carefully. Our revenue needs are indeed very pressing. As you highlighted, we've spent a lot of money in the last two years throughout the pandemic. So the, pre the revenue needs are indeed very pressing. In fact, on that alone, we would have to raise GSD in one shot from 7 to 9% and sooner this year. Yeah. But it was bec precisely because of the concerns that many people had about having the GSD rates go up at the time of rising prices yeah. that I decided, having looked at the overall situation, looking at the inflation outlook and the state of the economy, mm -hmm. that we can find a balance by delaying the GST and staggering it over two years, yeah. which is what we eventually announced in the budget. Okay. So the GST goods and services tax is one of uh, three legs, sort of a tripod, uh, main pillars behind uh, government revenue, about a fifth or so. The other fifth would be corporate tax, the other fifth, remaining fifth, uh, excuse me, third uh, would be personal or individual tax. Corporate tax, uh, people tried to look in the budget and you mentioned uh, a, a top up. If corporate tax ends up, if a company ends up paying less than 15%, mm -hmm. The other jurisdictions where the company is actually domiciled have the ability to uh, pick up the slack and make that back. This is all towards a global minimum That's right. uh, tax. Details of that, is that going to make Singapore any less competitive? And if so, how do you offset that? This is part of the global movement toward a minimum corporate tax rate of 15%. Uh, this move, if indeed it happens and the world moves towards a level playing field and these large MNCs or MNEs are taxed at a minimum of 15%, it will reduce the scope for tax competition. Yeah. In that sense, it will impact Singapore. Okay. But we have never relied only on taxes to compete for investments. What it means for us is that we have to redouble our efforts to strengthen our non-tax competitive factors. That includes our infrastructure, the capabilities of our workforce, and continuing to strengthen and make our overall business environment more attractive and conducive. Okay. So we are studying all that and we are determined to make sure that Singapore remains one of the best places in the world for business.